Hey team, it's Matt from Universal CPA Review. Thanks for joining me to watch this video where we'll walk through an example simulation on net present value. And it's a topic we do need to master. It is possible and likely that you will see a simulation on the BEC section that is testing you on how to calculate net present value. So before we dive into the solution, let's go through a few things. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We upload these videos. The least you can do is subscribe. Now, if you're studying for the exam, you need some support, join our Facebook groups. The links are in the description. And then if you're new to the program, well, try out our free 14 day trial. It's risk free, provides you 100% access, no credit card required. And then lastly, if you're thinking about purchasing, ask us about promotions and certainly ask us about the Spilt Milk program. It's a program that allows you to switch from another course to the universal course at a discount. So let's dive in to this solution video and learn how to master net present value. We'll start with the order of business here. So we'll start by going through getting an understanding of what the simulation requires. Then we're going to go ahead and go through the three steps to calculate net present value. And then lastly, we're going to need to use that net present value and determine whether or not the board of directors should approve or reject the project. Now this is a difficult simulation, so please focus and dial in. So off to the right is the prompt for the simulation. Now reading through basically Vail Industries, they are evaluating a new expansion project and as part of this project, they will have to purchase equipment. Now this will allow them to drive future revenues, but there will be some costs associated with it. So let's look at the facts. This equipment would be purchased on January 1st of year five for $25,000. It will have a useful life of five years. And then at the end, it will be scrapped for 16% of the original cost. Now, ultimately, for this project, this expansion project to be approved, the board of directors will have to see that the net present value of the project is greater than $0. And that basically means that the net present value of future cash inflows is greater than the outflows. So that's what we'll need to calculate. And if it's less than zero, the board of directors will reject the project. And then a few final details here. The company uses a hurdle rate of 8%. This basically means that the project needs to achieve a return of greater than 8%. Otherwise it will not be approved. And then also we'll have to factor in income taxes at some point. And they tell us to use an income tax rate of 20%. Now let's start with task number one, where we need to calculate the net present value for the expansion project. So there are three main events that are relevant to this net present value calculation. So starting in the beginning, we have January 1st, year five, right? They are going to purchase the equipment and that's the initial investment of $25,000. And then as soon as they get that equipment, they can start to generate revenue and income from operations, right? So we will have some cash inflow or outflow from operating. And then at the end, five years later, when the useful life is up and we're ready to cancel or end the project, we will scrap the equipment and that occurs on December 31st of year nine. So we need to figure out the present value of all these different inflows and outflows. So let's start with the cash inflow or outflow from operations, because this is going to be the hardest and most challenging part to calculating net present value. So what we need to do is figure out the annual cash inflows or outflows for the next five years. And it tells us to reference the expansion project memo from Maya. So when we pull that up, well, when we read through, we see that Nira, she's going to provide us the forecasted revenues by year. And then Maya gives us some cost estimates that we need to factor in. So let's think about how we're going to set this up, right? We're going to need annual cash flows for the next five years. So let's go ahead and prepare a projected income statement to start with. So like any forecasted income statement, we'll start with revenue. 
we're gonna have to refer to the email from Nira. She's an excellent financial analyst, and she tells us here are the projections by period for revenue. So we can see in year one, we started 10,000, and then by year five, we're all the way up to 22,000. So let's start by putting in the revenue amounts for the projected cash flows. So now we need to move on to the cost side of the project. And in general, right, I would recommend using Excel for this because these are not simple calculations to necessarily do on pen and paper. So I've done it in Excel. It's going to be attached in the explanation, but here we go. So for cost of materials, the driver there is just, it's 25% of revenue. So for year one, it's gonna be 2,500. For year five, it's 5,500, right? We can see the numbers for all the periods. Cost of labor, it's the same thing, except it's 15% of revenue in this case. Now, depreciation expense, this one, you know, it's part of cost of goods sold. You can really put it anywhere, but the important thing to understand is that we do need to include depreciation expense to calculate our income tax expense because depreciation does reduce our taxable operating income. Now, when it comes to depreciation expense, she tells us to use the straight line method. Now with the straight line method, we take the original cost less salvage value. Well, salvage value is 16% of the original cost, so that's $4,000. So that means our depreciable base is 25,000 minus the salvage value of 4,000. So 21,000, then divide by the useful life of five years. That means our depreciation expense per year is gonna be 4,200, right? So you can see that it's plugged in. Now that gets us down to gross profit. And then we can move on to the other two types of operating expenses. So if we skip down below, well, it says they will need to hire a director of operations for the expansion project. Full compensation will be $750 annually. Now this employee will be hired the date the project starts and fired the date the project ends. So we're gonna have 750 in every period. And then lastly, we have maintenance expense of $100 annually. So those are all of our expenses and that gets us down to operating income. Now, please do not forget about income tax expense. That is a required cash outflow, right? We have to pay taxes on our earnings. Now it told us that the income tax rate was 20%. And so we multiply operating income by 20% and that's how you get the income tax expense for each period. And ultimately we subtract that and that gets us down to net income. Now where some people make mistakes here is that they forget that we're going for cash flow and not net income, right? Net income sometimes could be equal to cash flow, but in this case it's not. We have to add back depreciation expense because it's a non-cash item meaning we don't actually pay cash when we record depreciation expense, right? It's just an expense that's recorded to write down our assets and we get a tax benefit for that. So anyway, add back depreciation expense and that gets us to our annual cash flow by period. Now this is undiscounted, right? So we're done with step one, but this is not the answer. We're gonna need to move to step two. Step two is where we need to discount those future cash flows from operations because remember the cash flow in year five that's in future dollars and we need it in today's dollars and because a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future so we need those present value factors and we can pull up the email that includes that now they give us rates of six percent eight percent and ten percent so what do we choose well remember their hurdle rate was eight percent that's the return that needs to be achieved and so we're going to use the rates under 8%. And on the left is going down is the years. So we need it for year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. So you can see in step two, we plugged in those rates. And basically we just multiply the cash flow undiscounted by the present value factor. And that gets us to the present value of future cash flows. And you can see that along the bottom, right? So for example, in year one, the undiscounted cash flow was 4,960, but we're saying, okay, from a present value perspective, 
it's really just 0 0.9259, which gets us down to 4,592, right? So same idea for all five periods. So step two gave us the present value of future cash flows from operations. Now in step three, we need to calculate the actual net present value. And remember, there was really three events that impacted the net present value. So let's start with the initial investment. That was $25,000, that's an outflow. Now that happened on the day that the project started, right? So we don't need to apply any present value factor, right? So that is why it's a negative $25,000. For the present value of future cash flows, that is from step two. And then we get down to the present value of scrapped equipment. Now, when we sell that equipment or scrap it, the scrap material is worth $4,000. However, that 4,000, that's future dollars. Again, we need to know what it is today. And so we can use that present value table again for $1. And so we're gonna take the 8% and the for five years, and that is 0 0.6806. So 4,000 times 0 0.6806, that gets us to the 2,722. So now we have all of the cash flow impact that we need for the net present value. We sum it all up and we see that the total is 5,501, right? And that's rounded to the nearest whole dollar as the instructions indicate. And along the way, we don't need to make any sort of rounding. Use Excel or your calculator, but just don't make any rounding adjustments until the final answer. And that will allow you to get to 5,501. So that was the solution for task number one. Now that is very challenging and I recommend downloading the Excel template that I put in the solution. You'll be able to follow the formulas and you'll see how I arrived at it. And on the exam again, please use the Excel if you see this type of simulation because it's much easier to map it all out rather than trying to write it down on the pen and paper or use a calculator. So in step two, now we just need to figure out will the board of directors approve or reject the project? As we remember from the original prompt, as long as the net present value is greater than zero, then that means that the future cash inflows are greater than the future cash outflows. And in this case, we had a net present value that was positive. Remember, it was 5,501. That's greater than zero. So the project will be approved by the board of directors. So this was a great challenging simulation on how to calculate net present value for a potential expansion project. And this is a type of question businesses face every day. Should they invest in a project and will it return positive dollars? And the net present value calculation is a great way to do it. If the project is greater than zero, and you have the capital, then why not, right? So this again is an everyday situation for businesses. And you can see how in task number two, right? We ultimately had to make a decision. So make sure you understand the whole purpose of this calculation. Again, reference the Excel file in the explanation here, because I think it will help you to see and follow the formulas.